Your Excellency, social protection is about the bottom up. The people are the lowest point of the pyramid. I wish to thank you all for listening to me. It is now my humble duty to welcome His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa. Karibu. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, CS Labor and Social Protection, our international partners, the leaders of the labor movement, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Your Excellency, I don't have much to say today. When Kenya is peaceful, business is uninterrupted, and Kenyans are busy, I don't have much to say. It is now my privilege to ask you to be upstanding as I welcome the President of the Republic of Kenya, President William Ruto. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Please, let's take our seats. Asante sana. Um, Mr. Deputy President, Ministers present, um, Permanent Secretary is present, the Chair of the Council of Governors, our development partners and uh, social partners, uh, distinguished participants, good morning. Um, today we begin a series of important events to mark a week whose significance is critical for the people of Kenya and essential to the government of Kenya. Our bottom-up economic transformation agenda stands on the foundation of creating sustainable capacities and viable opportunities for the empowerment of people at the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid. A unique feature of the bottom-up agenda, therefore, is that each pillar of our economic transformation is deeply embedded in commitments arising from Article 43 of the Constitution, which sets our economic and social rights as fundamental human rights. Through our universal health coverage pillar, we are discharging our constitutional mandate to actualize every Kenyan's right to the highest attainable standard of health and to healthcare services. Similarly, the right to accessible and adequate housing, as well as reasonable standards of sanitation, are being realized through the affordable housing pillar of the plan for the bottom-up transformation. Additionally, our agro-industrial and food security pillar attends to the right of every Kenyan to be free from hunger and to have adequate food of acceptable standards. The right to clean, safe water is catered for through the irrigation and the water harvesting components of our agro-industry and food security, as well as the cross-cutting enablers of our plan. The right to social security, as already observed, forms the bedrock of the strategy and the foundation of our governing agenda. As, as such, it permeates every pillar and therefore affects interventions across sectors. The right to education must be observed robustly as a basic indicator of commitment to enhancing inclusion, effective participation, productivity of citizens, and transforming national competitiveness. This event, therefore, is important to all of us. I am delighted with the progress we are making in focusing transformational att attention to the social sector, which is the backbone of sustainable social development. The paramount question to be answered in the course of deliberations during 
this conference arises from its theme. Number one, first, what are we doing to accelerate the development of an inclusive and integrated social protection system in our country? Secondly, what are our strategic options for the expansion of coverage and improvement of shock responsiveness in order to leave no one behind? These are the foremost considerations in promoting and advocating for an integrated social protection system that can achieve increased coverage throughout the effective coordination of diverse actors in order to focus our full capacity on the people. Our philosophy of development is people-centered. We must empower the people to effectively actualize their potential by taking full advantage of economic opportunities and to have capacity to optimally benefit from development. We are confident as a nation and as government that we can simultaneously pursue rapid economic transformation and social protection at the same time and that ultimately we shall achieve both of them. Social protection waits cannot social protection cannot wait until 2030 when we will have achieved our economic vision. If it does the development achieved at the expense of or in exclusion of social protection will be hollow and fragile. We must undertake both commitments simultaneously because the standard of social protection is a good measure of sustainability and the promise of shared prosperity. The other urgent reason is that at the moment, too many people cannot afford a decent living. They are vulnerable, marginalized, and at the risk of being left behind. 16% of Kenyans today live below the poverty line. The number of people living in extreme poverty peaked during the COVID pandemic, reaching 8.9 million people. 26% of Kenyan children are under the age of five, are stunted. Undernutrition is depriving them of normal growth, development, and is robbing them of their full potential. Older citizens, orphans, and vulnerable children, as well as people living with extreme disability, have a right to receive support now. And it is grossly unjust to wait even for a moment for whatever reason. And that is why cabinet has now approved that from June 1, the social protection cash transfer money will be disbursed before salaries of public servants is disbursed. I know for a very long time we've had social protection cash transfer money disbursed three, four, five, six, maybe sometimes seven months after they are due. The instructions I have given and cabinet have undertaken and the ministry of uh, the uh, treasury have undertaken is that from June 1, before salaries of public servants is paid, cash transfer for the vulnerable will be paid. I think it is the moral thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Because if we don't look after our vulnerable, we will be a society that will be judged very harshly. It is the reason why government is implementing various strategies to extend the safety net as far as possible. The reviewed national social protection policy, therefore, provides a framework to coordinate interventions across the country 
that are being undertaken by a broad coalition of actors from various sectors. County governments, the private sector, multilateral organizations including UNICEF and the World Bank are among the government's cherished partners and collaborators in the social protection agenda. Consequently, the government established a dedicated Department of Social Protection and Citizen Affairs. The participation of multi, multiple partners in, is highly welcome and appreciated due to the limited coverage of social protection interventions under such programs as social assistance, social security, and social health insurance, which face significant resource constraints. The government has allocated 28 billion to support cash transfer programs implemented by the State Department for Social Protection. These programs include older persons, orphans, and vulnerable children, persons with severe disabilities, the hunger safety net for poor and vulnerable households in the ASAL regions, and the Inua Jami program. We are committed to effectively ring-fencing budgetary allocations for social protection programs and further securing them by ensuring their fiscal sustainability. Our journey towards universal health coverage is underway. Already, maternity services and primary health care are provided free of charge in our public hospitals. At the same time, people who earn low income poor and vulnerable households are receiving much needed financial relief from the introduction of subsidized health insurance cover through the National Social Insurance Fund. National Health Insurance Fund, sorry. 223,000 vulnerable households with bona fide NHIF membership have access to services including cancer care. Again on this front, we are in discussion with stakeholders in that sector to actualize the commitment I made to the people of Kenya that we will make NHIF contributions affordable. At the moment, the lowest contributor pays 500 shillings. We have worked the numbers. It will be possible beginning later this year to pay 300 shillings and still keep the cover. Again, so that we can expand the number of people whom we can carry on board the national health insurance cover. Again, we are redesigning the whole delivery of health, health, health cover or health facilities we are having conversations with the county governments, and within the next few weeks, we will be rolling out the program that will also make it possible for us to now pay stipend to the 100,000 community health workers or volunteers across the country, again as a means to bring the people at the bottom of the pyramid on board health services. Malnutrition and undernutrition are severely punitive burdens for children. They also increase susceptibility to other diseases and the financial cost of treatment. In 2014, the cost of hunger survey estimated that costs associated with underweight children were 13.1 billion while those associated with acute respiratory infections, acute diarrhea syndrome, fever, and malaria was approximately 800 million. To provide comprehensive protection for young children, the State Department of Health, Social Protection, Education, and Agriculture will strengthen their collaboration and coordination mechanisms to serve more vulnerable children and secure their present as well as their future. Again, to make sure that all our children attend school, 
I did make a commitment, and we are in discussion with the counties, that all our schools, especially in our informal settlements, in our arid and semi-arid areas that have challenges to access to food, we have undertaken that every county government that provides school feeding program, we are going to match the funds as national government so that we can get more and more of our children to access food in school. I appreciate on this account the partnership of UNICEF and the World Bank with the government in the nutrition improvement for children through cash and health education program, economic inclusion. Inclusion as well as the universal child benefit program, which is being piloted in Kisumu, Embu, and Kajiado counties. Beyond targeting malnutrition, these interventions also address exclusion by increasing the social protection cover of the vulnerable and supporting their economic empowerment to enhance resilience. Traditionally, the youth, women, and persons living with disability face tremendous obstacles in accessing opportunities to participate in development that they have been virtually excluded from meaningful economic activity. The financial vehicle to deliver this inclusion and ignite vigorous economic activity among vulnerable and marginalized Kenyans is the Hustler Fund. And a lot has been said about the Hustler Fund. This is a fund that is now about um, uh, four months old. We have disbursed 23 billion shillings uh, through that fund. We have seven million Kenyans who borrow regularly on that fund. And because we introduced a savings component, already 1.35 billion shillings has been saved by people borrowing as less as between 500 and 1,000 shillings. Recently, we included, even for those who do not want to borrow any money, we included a component in the last one month for those who just want to save. And already in the last one month, seven million shillings has been saved on that platform. And I am encouraged that there are many Kenyans who are prepared to walk with us the journey of saving so that we can also reduce vulnerability to people and give them a chance to access resources when times are difficult. The financial um, other programs include the redesigned National Youth Service, and I will be making some statements about the National uh, Youth Service and how we are going to redesign it. The Youth and Waste of Fund Enterprise Funds, as well as the National Fund for, for Persons with Disabilities. The youth access to government procurement opportunities, as well as the youth training and internship program, are also frameworks to facilitate the inclusion and empowerment of formerly neglected, yes, yet immensely critical demographics. Again, as I made a commitment uh, uh, this week, earlier this week, the internship program that we intentionally wanted to bring all our graduating um, young people from all our institutions of higher learning, that they must, we must find a transition mechanism for them so that, and should be funded by the government of Kenya, will also provide a safe landing for our young people coming out of college and hopefully it becomes also an intervention in terms of ensuring that uh, citizens are cushioned from vulnerabilities that come with um, looking for opportunities for work. Another exemplary and promising collaboration with our partners 
is the Kenya Social Economic Inclusion Project involving the government and the World Bank aimed at diversifying social protection programs and transitioning them from dependency on government funding into income generation. Through tested graduation models, these interventions are presently underway in Taita Taveta, Moranga, Makueni, Marsabit, and Kisumu counties. We have made steady progress in inclusive education over the past 20 years, when free and compulsory primary education was inaugurated. Over the years, free day secondary has been introduced to complement it. We have now implemented a 100% transition and established a pathway framework to anchor tertiary education with emphasis on technical and vocational education in our Tibets. Tibet is going to provide marginated skills and innovation to power Kenya's industrialization, enable it to grow into a technical and industrial powerhouse. Necessary engagements are also underway to ensure that government provides Kenyan learners with high quality education that will equip them to become leaders of the knowledge economy who will turn the country into a globally competitive innovation hotspot. Although Kenya's social security industry is worth one trillion, it has, now, it has low penetration at only 17%. Out of this, many are not saving enough for adequate income replacement. It is necessary to avoid foreseeable cyclical problems arising from a population that is deprived of financial cushion of savings. I therefore urge the National Social Security Fund, the Retirement Benefits Authority, and other stakeholders in both public and private sector to collaborate in formulating an effective contribution mechanism to mobilize adequate savings for every working person. I listened very carefully um, to the statement made by uh, Secretary General of KOTU, and I want to thank our social partners for their participation and their understanding. Uh, we've had challenges, we've had a problem for the last almost 10 years we could not implement the new rates that we had negotiated. But because of their participation and their understanding, I am now happy that it is not the case anymore that citizens will be contributing 200 shillings to NSSF. That from last month, Every Kenyan now will contribute 6% of their pay so that we can progressively build cushion so that we can also eliminate old age poverty. Many of the people that we have on the cash transfer program are former workers, people who worked, but because the culture of saving was absent, in their retirement, as you heard uh, Dr. Atuoli say, many people, many people do not survive the first three, or, three months or one year when they get out of work because they do not have a cushion. I am very confident now going forward, we will improve our savings as a percentage of GDP from the current between 8, maybe 10, maybe 11 percent, when other countries like in the West are anywhere between 40 or 50 percent. In fact, some are at 55 percent, 55 percent saving as a percentage of GDP. We are at about 10. It means we have a long way to go. I am very confident that with the awakening that savings is not a tax. Savings 
is not a burden. It is your money that you have set aside for that day when you need it, desperately. And it is the culture we must build. Old age poverty is one of the biggest problems we have in Kenya. And it is contributed significantly because we have not built the culture of savings. And with the new program, I want to urge every Kenyan, even if you are not, even if you don't have a salary job, make it your intention to save for tomorrow. That is why even in the lending that we are using, uh, even the lending we have in the Hustler Fund, we made a mandatory 5% saving. And in just four months, we have managed a saving of 1.3 billion. I am confident that with the new rates, <clears throat> with the new rates of our National Social uh, Security Fund, we will be able to double the resources we have as savings in the next eight or nine years, to double what we have today. And we will progressively move our savings as a percentage of GDP from 10%, possibly in the next 10, 15 years, to between 20 and 25%. I think we will be moving in the right direction as a nation. And I want to thank all Kenyans. I know we have 14 court, but we have also negotiated on tables. And a combination of all that has now given us a way forward. I believe that the time has now come for us to actualize the social assistance fund for vulnerable groups as mandated in Vision 2030. The State Department and the State Law Office should lie us with parliamentary leadership to expeditiously generate the necessary legislative framework to make this a reality. It is now time to recognize our partners in, the fundamental critical, in this fundamental critical undertaking. Our county governments, led by the chair who is here, have emerged as, such, as focal points of collective action in social protection. Thank you very much, Madam, and your team. The World Bank, UNICEF, and the World Food Program have been indefatigable and effective traditional partners of the government, as well as the International Labor Organization, Food and Agriculture Organization, the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, and the Save, uh, the Save uh, Children Fund. Many private sector entities have also contributed, especially under the corporate social responsibility framework. I want to very sincerely thank all our partners for their immense contribution to the success of social protection uh, in Kenya. I encourage more participants and more partners to join in this noble undertaking and hasten our progress to full social protection cover in Kenya as a means and an end of sustainable development, we are investing in the people through social protection to enable them to participate in and if benefit from the economic transformation of our nation. This requires collaboration. It requires building a bigger coalition of partners, of Kenyans, of private sector, of the public sector, all of us acting in concert uh, so that we can uh, actualize social protection as a mechanism of ensuring that no one is left behind. I now declare the Kenya Social Protection Conference and wish you very fruitful deliberations officially open.
Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless our great country. Asante ni sana. Can we give another warm clap to His Excellency the President for that wonderful speech and also for the commitment made. Your Excellency, with your permission at this point, as a sign of the commitment made, would like to request that you just sign the board there, which will remain as a clear sign of the commitment that has now been made in this regard. We'll also request that the British High Commissioner to Kenya, Madam Jane Marriott, also append her signature there. And also Dr. Kitty, uh, who is a Roland Co. Director, Center for Social Protection Institute of Development Studies, starting with His Excellency the President, then will be followed by Madam, uh, by British High Commissioner to Kenya, uh, Madam Jane Marriott. Then finally, we'll also have Dr. Kitty, who's going to sign and append their signature there as a significant sign of a commitment that has now been made uh, regarding social protection. And that beautiful, wonderful signature right there by His Excellency, the President. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. If we can also have um, Dr. Kitty also append her signature. Do we have Madam Marriott still in the house? Oh, she's, she's left. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. We can also give our, a round of applause for that. Thank you very much. And the last thing we'd like to do, Your Excellency, with